One of the big questions in the financial sector is, are banks ready from a technology, process and ecosystem perspective to evolve in a way that will meet customer demands? Banks must create or become part of a robust ecosystem of partners in order to take part in the growth spurred by embedded finance. And to look at how this can be done, we're joined now by Shankar Ramamurthy. He's the Global Managing Partner, Banking and Financial Markets at IBM. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. My pleasure. Look forward to the discussion. So share a little bit about yourself and your role at IBM Consulting, uh, uh, as well as how IBM works with financial institutions to be positioned for an increasingly embedded finance ecosystem. Sure. So that's a two-part question. Let me start by first talking about what I do. So IBM has got two parts to it. IBM technology, which is well known. Or it's our hardware, software, cloud um, um, part of our business. And then we've got IBM Consulting, which provides services um, to organizations, typically the largest enterprises around the world. And financial services is a significant part of what we do, both on the technology side and on the consulting side and I lead the consulting practice for banking and financial markets worldwide. It's about a $5 billion consulting practice, and, and we have the pleasure and the privilege of working for some of the largest financial institutions with all the transformation um, that they need to accomplish in order to achieve their business objectives and do the right thing by their customers. Mm. Recently, we did uh, a significant piece of thought leadership working with an organization called Bayan, that's a banking industry architecture network. It's a dot org. It's a, it's a consortium uh, of like-minded financial institutions um, and independent software vendors and systems integrators in the banking industry ecosystems. Between Red Hat, IBM, and Bayan, we did this piece of work on embedded finance. Now, why embedded finance? That's an area where there's a lot of innovation happening. Uh, it's a space where financial institutions are investing in order to drive value for their customers. And the recently released study has some really compelling insights for our banking clients. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this study a little bit more. Uh, Bayan, the Bank and Industry Architecture Network and IBM's Institute uh, for Business Value. Um, they, this study on embedded finance, creating the everywhere, everyday bank. Based on interviews with over a thousand banking executives and over twelve thousand consumers globally, what was the headline takeaway from the study for you? There are five. By the way, thank you for for pointing out. We we put a lot of energy and effort um, into this piece of work. Um, there were five takeaways. I'm just going to touch on on the, on, the, on the key points in the study. It's quite a comprehensive study. Uh, the first point is that close to seventy percent of the banks recognize that embedded finance is important for what they're doing. It's either core to their business or closely associated, in other words, context to what they're doing. Now, having um, said that, only about 20% of the financial institutions have got real capabilities that they've implemented in the market in and around embedded finance. Another 50% of the financial institutions have got initiatives in flight, but not fully in production yet in the embedded finance uh, space. Um, and importantly, it takes about six years from the launch of an embedded finance capability to the market for the financial institutions to achieve the objectives they're looking to achieve. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not a one and done, it's a journey. It takes about six years. So that was the second kind of finding from the study. The third important finding, and we can double click on it, is there is a gap between, on the one hand, what customers are expecting, and on the other hand, where banks are focused on. And that was one of the reasons why we spoke to 1,000 executives on the one hand, banking executives, and over 12,000 customers in over 12 countries around the world to understand if the, the, the objectives are aligned or if there is a mismatch, and there is a mismatch, we can double click on that. The fourth finding is that despite material investments that banks have been making in technology and infrastructure and applications, their complex monolithic systems are inhibiting their ability to achieve business outcomes in the context of embedded finance. 
Um, and, and the last and important finding is that things like security and privacy, on the one hand, are things that banks are known for, but on the other hand, they're inhibiting the ability of banks to rapidly implement capability to achieve their business objectives in the context of embedded finance. Yeah. We're talking about embedded finance, but let's define that. And can you talk a little bit about why it's such an essential component that banks have to embrace as a, as a transformative tenant of their uh, business strategy? Great question. So embedded finance is about, if, if I can step back and if you think about a customer journey, financial institutions have historically provided financial services capabilities to customers when the customers approach them with a need. But if you think about the life cycle of, of what a customer is dealing with, for example, if you're going to be buying a house, the first thing that you, do, that you think about is not about getting a mortgage. The first thing you're thinking about is, hey, where am I going to buy, buy a house or an apartment? Let me talk to some real estate brokers. Let me find out which suburbs or locations I'm going to go and, and, and potentially you know, uh, buy my house in. So your customer journey starts way before you come to a bank saying, hey, now I need a mortgage, right? Embedded finance is about a financial institution in that context, reaching into that customer journey and ensuring they're part of that journey way before you as a consumer in this context are going to look for a mortgage. So by the time you're ready to get your mortgage, you naturally want to go to a financial institution because they've already embedded themselves in that journey, mm. as an example. Mm. What surprised you the most about your findings of consumer demands within this research? So that's a great question. Um, on the one hand, consumers, by the way, the consumers love the security and reliability um, that a financial institution provides. That's, that's their number one need. But once you get past that, there are two or three things that they highlighted as things that are particularly important for them. One is customer service. Second one is rewards, interestingly. Um, and the third is around everything to do with security and reliability. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what the customers uh, were interested in. On the other hand, when I look at it from a financial institution standpoint, they were focused on other areas. Now, both of them recognized privacy and security as a number one topic. Um, financial institutions were much more focused on peer-to-peer -peer payment, buy now, pay later style products, uh, which was a disconnect between what customers were expecting versus where, where financial institutions are investing in, in the context of embedded finance. Uh, uh, there are so many different directions that this conversation could go and so many different things that we could ask you about, but we do have to leave it there. And we hope you'll get a chance to have many more conversations throughout the week here at Cyboss. Uh, Shankar Ramamurthy, Global Managing Partner at Banking and Financial Markets at IBM. We so appreciate you taking the time to chat Thank with us. Thank you very much for the opportunity.